the technique called what will you say what is that technique called that technique is called what anybody remembers what is the name of the technique guys hypothesis testing rajiv has given the correct answer hypothesis testing in this session we won't talk we, we won't uh, see the theory of hypothesis testing because uh, that alone will take at least 3 to 3 to 4 hours okay but uh, just a note that if you want to check whether the feature columns whether there is too much of difference between the average value of the feature columns we'll use hypothesis testing technique there are many techniques out of which there is one technique called t test hypothesis testing which will be useful over here but fine for now forget just remember that in this scenario we'll use something called hypothesis testing and if i perform hypothesis testing we'll find out that the feature columns are already on the same scale that that means there is not too much of difference between the average value of the feature column so we'll conclude that feature columns are on the same scale fine for now since i have not taught you the theory of hypothesis testing i will also not implement it but fine we know i know that the in the end the conclusion will be that the feature columns are on the same scale as there is not too much of difference between the average value of the feature columns fine so we have performed a sixth step now guys seventh step left what is the seventh step let's see the seventh step seventh step is to make sure that i train my model on the training data set so let's go ahead and let's train my model on the training data set okay so we'll train our model on the training data set over here before training my model i will have to create the model first right before training my model my model should exist for example if i want to train you as a student that student should first exist only then i can train him similarly for training the model that model should first exist how to make that model exist we will need help of a class over here a python class and that python class i will import from this library so from sklearn folder there is a file called uh, neighbors okay from that file i will import this class called k neighbors classifier i will import this class called k neighbors classifier after importing the class i will go ahead and call the class and when i call the class what will happen is a model will be created let me reference that model by a variable and by writing just this one line of code my knn model will be created okay here while calling the class i can pass value for parameter called n underscore neighbors and i can specify any value that i want here i have not specified so by default it will assume that number of neighbors is equal to 5 but if i want to change it i can change it okay so for example instead of 5 i want to use number of neighbors equal to 4 so i can specify it i can say number of neighbors equal to 4 okay and what will happen is my knn model will be created with number of neighbors equal to 4 so whatever parameter values you want to give you give uh, you give it while calling the class okay so over here while calling the model class i have passed the parameter values for the model okay so over here with this the model has been created now let me go ahead and let me train the model in order to train the model i will use this model object and on it i will call this method called fit okay fit literally means scanning okay fit method what it does is it scans okay scans now why scanning is required suppose if i want to train on my textbook okay in our school days and in our college days we used to train on our textbook so what did we essentially do we basically scanned the contents in the textbook right when i say that i am learning from my textbook i basically scan the contents in the textbook similarly if i want my model to train on the training data set my model should scan the training data set in order to scan it i will use this fit method okay and we need to scan it on what we need to train it on what on the training data set so guys over here out of these five outcomes out of these five outputs what all are part of my training data set okay what all are part of my training data set you can see in their names only out of these five outcomes what all are part of my training data set you can see in their names what are they anybody just mention out of these five outcomes what all things are part of my training data set it is mentioned in their names yes ishita has given the correct answer x train and y train are part of my training data set so i will pass both x train and y train inside my fit method x train and y train perfect and with this i have performed my 
seventh step, which is to train the model of my training data set. Then, what is my eighth step? Eighth step is to test the model on the testing data set. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's test the model on the testing data set. So we'll now just go ahead and test the model on the testing data set. For doing that, I will use the model object and sorry, I will use the model object. Let me write the correct code. I'll use the model object and using it, I will call this method called score and score method is used to test the model. We need to test the model on what? We need to test it on the testing data set. So out, out of these four outcomes, what are things are part of my testing data set? Can anyone answer? For training data set, Ishita gave the correct answer. Can any other student give the correct answer for testing data set? The question for you is, out of these four things, what all things are part of my testing data set? Anybody? Out of these four outcomes, what all outcomes are part of my testing data set? Yes, Kanan has given the correct answer. Kanan has rightly mentioned that X test and Y test. These two things are part of my testing data set. So I'll pass X test and Y test over here. Okay, and when I do this, what will happen is the model score will be calculated. Model accuracy will be calculated. Accuracy is always between 0 to 1. Okay, and for a model to be acceptable, its accuracy should at least be greater than 0 or greater than or equal to 0 0.75. Okay. Uh, then I can say that my model is acceptable. If let's say it is greater than or equal to 0 0.8, then I can say that my model is good. Okay, then I can say that my model is good. If it is greater than 0 0.9, then I can say that it is very good. And if it is greater than or equal to 0 0.95, then I can say that my model is excellent model. So let's see what kind of model have we built. Let's see the accuracy score over here and have a look over here. You can see it's greater than 0 0.90. So we can say that we have built a very good model. Okay. So just following these steps as it is, we have not done anything over here. Uh, even for finding the best value for my number of neighbors, we didn't use hyperparameter tuning. We just assumed some value manually. And even after assuming value manually still, you can see my score that I've got is still very good. Okay. But if I apply hyperparameter tuning, okay, if I make sure that the value that I'm passing to my parameter is good, then the outcome of the model will be even better then. Okay. Fine. For example, just to show to you, if I change the value of the parameter manually, let's say instead of four, I have number of neighbors equal to five. Now you will see that the outcome of the model will change. Okay, one second. Uh, with five, it remains the same. Fine, let me change it to two. Okay, just to prove to you that with different, different value of parameter, you will get different outcome. Fine, here it seems it is the accuracy is keeping the same. Okay, fine. So it seems the outcome is the same. Let me change it to 10. I just want to show to you that with different value of parameter, the outcome could change. Okay. Fine, let me change it to a different value 20 then. At least let's see with 20. It seems over here in this data set because my data set is small, right? This usually happens on small data set. Here my data set just has 150 rows. So usually you will see that even after changing the uh, value of n underscore neighbors, it might happen that your accuracy is still the same okay there, there won't be that much of a difference but on a big data set okay if you try the same exact code on a big data set you will see that there will be differences but fine here i'm working on a small data set so fine it seems over here that even after changing the value of my parameter my performance isn't changing too much why because i'm working on a smaller very small data set having just 150 rows in total but fine if you work on a big data set you will see that the performance of your model will change depending upon different value of your parameter. Okay, fine. So guys, we have just implemented KNN model on Azure ML notebook. Up till here guys, any doubts whatsoever? Easy, steps were easy, understanding? Was it hard? Made sense? Yes or no? Was it hard? If you have any doubt, you can let me know, easy? Okay. And that was the only so Azure ML notebook actually is the hardest part, right? Because Azure ML designer is even easy than notebook and Azure auto ML is even easy than designer itself. 
So the hardest part is done and you can see when the hard part was not that hard to implement. OK, fine. So over here we have implemented a model on Azure ML notebook. Up till here, any doubts, let me know. require most self study. Ha. Huh. That you will require because see what you, uh, machine learning is very, very vast. OK, uh, so over here today we are just covering, let's say 5% okay, of your DP100 certification. Actually, it is very, very vast. But once you get a, okay, but at least your base will be clear today. And once your base is clear, then the rest of, rest of the stuff is easy, but fine. Uh, apart from Rajiv, I hope other students have also understood Kanan, Ishita, Ashwin, Ganesh. Okay, if anybody has any doubt, Rajendra, anyone clear? Okay, fine, fine then. All right, so we have just implemented our KNN model on first approach, which is called Azure ML Notebook. Now, what is the second approach called? The second approach in which I can implement a model is Azure ML Designer, right? So let's see with Designer how to do it. The difference between Azure ML Notebook and Azure ML Designer is in Notebook, we had to write the code for these steps, whereas in Designer, there is no need to write code. OK, so let me show you how. So what I will do now is I will go ahead, launch the studio. I'll go ahead, launch the studio and now I will start working with Azure ML designer. And here we have to create a designer pipeline. Pipeline is nothing but a sequence of steps. OK, it is nothing but a sequence of steps. So here, let me specify those sequence of steps. We know in machine in Azure ML designer, we have to specify a sequence of steps. It's just that the code for these steps does not need to be set, uh, does not need to be mentioned. OK, fine. Now what I will do is first we need data to work with, right? So let me go ahead and let me get that data. So here you can see there is a data tab. OK, here you can see there is a data tab. Currently, I have not uploaded any data. So let me go ahead and let me upload data. So you can see this plus button over here. By clicking on it, I will try to upload data over here. So let me give this data some name. I will call it Iris data. OK, and the type I will select tabular only. OK, uh, because in my tabular data set, we know that my data set would have rows and columns. We want that the data that I'm using for machine learning does have some rows and some columns. Fine. So over here, I'll select tabular, click on next. Then it will ask me from where do I want to upload data from Azure storage, from any SQL database or from any other web file. Currently, I want to upload it from my local laptop. So I will click on this option over here, local files. So a file will be uploaded from my local laptop. OK, and here it will ask me that the file that I'm uploading, it should be stored in which Azure storage. So it will specify a name. I will just keep it, keep everything default over here. OK, the default. Uh, in the default storage account, it will be stored. Fine, then I'll click on next. It will ask me to upload. So let me upload that file over here and I will upload this file called Iris. Here we go. OK, and then I'll click on next. It will just validate the file that I have uploaded. And after validating, we should get a preview. If you are happy with the preview, you can go ahead. If you are unhappy with it, you can, you know, do some settings like you can skip some of the rows if you want to. OK, and so on. But mostly. Uh, there should not be any issue while reading the file. So the mo most of the times you are always happy with the preview. So I'll just click on next. I'm happy with the preview here. I can select or deselect any columns. OK, if I do not want to include the ID column, I can deselect it from here. OK, so I can do that. I can even change the type of the values in the column. So instead of integer, if you want it to be something else, you can do it. Integer means a numeric value without decimal point. OK, and uh, whereas you can see in sepal length column, all the values are numeric but have a decimal point. Fine. So you can change the type of the value in the column over here. You can see in the last column I have type the type of the value is string. String means a collection of characters. It could be collection of alphabetical characters, numeric characters, symbolic characters. So 
just the collection of characters okay fine uh then i'll click on next okay and i will create this data and once this data has been created i will drag it and drop it in this canvas okay so over here i have this azure ml canvas on this canvas i'll go ahead and drop it once uh, i drop it into the canvas i can go ahead and use it fine now what was the first step to implement machine learning guys uh, first step to implement supervised learning model the same eight steps that we had followed in azure ml notebook same eight steps will follow here also what was the first step ha uh, ishita says check that my data should not have any missing values so what i will do is i will right click on the data and i will try to have a preview of the data okay preview and looking at the preview i can check whether i have missing values or not here i can look at the preview if i want more details i can click on this option called profile okay and here i will have information i will have more information over here we anyways know that this data does not have any missing values so no need to worry okay here you can get you can see missing count missing count of first column is 0 missing count of second column is 0 missing count of third column is 0 so you can see there is no missing value in any of the columns so we are fine so first step has been done with help of ishita can second step be provided by you guys anyone apart from ishita second step what was the second step guys anybody remembers the second step anybody with the second first step was to make sure that my data does not have any missing values what was the second step there were eight steps in total first step has been done what was the second if you guys remember second step was to make sure that we select the feature column and target column any other column ha huh, ram murli has given the correct answer right so selecting feature and target column okay fine so let's do it so any other column apart from feature and target should be removed yes or no ram any other column apart from feature and target should be removed and we should only keep useful columns we should only keep feature column or target column okay fine so over here i'll go to this component tab and here i can search for a component that helps us to select useful features okay select useful features so you can see there is this component called select columns in data set so i'll click on it i will connect these two steps together okay and now i'll double click on this component called select columns and here i will try to edit as to which columns i want to select which columns i want to remove so suppose i want to include all columns okay so over here let's say i want to include all columns but after including all i want to exclude a column so ram murli do you remember we excluded one column from the data set it was neither a target it was neither a feature do you remember the name of that column id yes rajiv remembers the name id so over here i will mention the column name okay and by mentioning it i will remove this column called id so i am excluding this column called id i am excluding this column over here called id fine i will save the settings all right fine so i am excluding that column called id fine so second step has been done with help of ram murli and rajiv okay third step anybody remembers the third step third ha huh, rajiv mentioned that my feature column should be numeric we know that the feature columns are numeric okay uh we when we had a preview of my data we had a look at our four feature columns we saw that they were numeric right so that's that's done okay third step has been done with help of rajiv fourth step you can see when we had preview of the data there only we can see that all the feature columns are numeric so my third step was already done right my third step was already done fine fourth step ha huh. ramuli says that my features should have some rows and some columns so yes we know if i have a look at preview of the data we will see that my feature columns that i would select do have some rows and some columns so that's fine okay totally in my data set i have 150 rows and six columns but in my feature 
you can see species was target so species is not a feature column id is not also a feature column so in total i had four columns and 150 rows in my feature right so yes my features do have some rows some columns okay fine so that means my fourth step has also been done right what about the fifth step anybody remembers the fifth fifth step Yes, Anil remembers the fifth step. Anil says we need to split the data set into two parts, training and testing. So here there is a component to split the data set. So I'll just try to search for that component called split data set. Here it is. I will drag it and place it onto my canvas and I will connect the two steps together over here. Now you can see when we split the data set, we get two data sets, training data set and then testing data set. Okay, training and testing data set. All right, fine. Fifth step done. What was the sixth step, guys? Sixth step. Ah, Anil says we need to make sure that my features are on the same scale. If they are not on the same scale, we will convert them to the same scale. Okay, but here we know that my features were on the same scale, so no need to worry. Because if we have a look at the mean value of the feature, we will see that yes, the feature columns are on the same scale. Okay, if we have a look at the mean values, we will see that, yes, you can see mean values. We will see that the feature columns are on the same scale. ID is not a feature column, but for sepal and sepal width, if you have a look at the mean values, you can see 5.84, right? Then 3.05. So it's not too much of difference between the mean values. So fine. We found out that feature columns were on the same scale. Six step done. Only two steps left now. So what is the seventh step now? Anybody remembers the seventh step? Huh. Anil and Rajiv are saying seventh step is to train the model on the training data set. Train what? Train the model on the training data set. So first we will get the model. In order to train the model, first the model has to be created, right? So here we can select any model. Okay. So you can search in the component section. Any machine learning model, any machine learning algorithm you can select. Here we will select a model which is of classification type, not of regression type. Okay, we will select a model of classification type. So I'll go below. There should be a model over here of classification type. One second, let me just search and we should have a model of classification type. Huh. Here it is. We have one model over here. There are many other models also that you can use. We have already used the model called KNN previously. This time, let's use a different model just to keep the example a bit different. Okay. So suppose over here the name of the model is boosted decision tree model. Okay. It's just that in this model, the mathematics in the background will be different. But in the end, it's doing the same thing. It can be used for inference of prediction, just like KNN could be used for inference of prediction. Even this model can be used for inference or prediction. It's just that in the background, this model works. And the mathematics of the model is different, but the end goal is the exact same. Okay, here I'm choosing a different model just to keep the example a bit different. Okay, so model has been created. After creating the model, I have to train my model, right? So for training the model, there is a component called train. Okay, there should be a component over here called train. Ah, yes, there is a component over here called train model. Here it is. Okay, fine. Now, what I will do, guys, is I will pass my untrained model. Okay, so I will pass the model that I want to train. That is one thing that I will do. I will pass the model that I want to train. Okay, that is the first connection that I'll make. Next, we train our model on which data set, guys? Training data set or testing data set? Training or testing? On which data set do I train my model? Training data set, right? Training data set. We always train our model on the training data set. If you remember the seven step, we train our model on the training data set. So over here, guys, over here, you can see after splitting, we are getting two data sets, training and testing. So we'll take our training data set and connect it over here. Okay. So let's take our training data set, connect it so that I can train using the training data set. Here we go. So my seventh step has been done. Now, before I go ahead to the eighth step, there is a doubt for one student. Ram Murli says, can you explain why we should not take regression? Ram Murli, uh, what is regression model? Can you just 
आंसर व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन क्लासिफिकेशन एंड रिग्रेशन बड़ी जस्ट टू रिवाइज व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन क्लासिफिकेशन एंड रिग्रेशन ओके इफ यू डोंट रिमेंबर नो इश्यूज आई आई विल एक्सप्लेन इट हां सो वे आर राजीव हैज गिवन द आंसर राजीव सेज दैट इन क्लासिफिकेशन मॉडल माय टारगेट कॉलम हैज फाइनाइट सेट ऑफ पॉसिबिलिटीज दैट इज एग्जैक्टली व्हाट राम मुरली आल्सो सेज दैट इन क्लासिफिकेशन मॉडल माय target column has finite set of possibilities whereas in regression model my target column has infinite set of possibilities ram morley in this iris data set what was our target column do you remember before the lunch break we had talked about it our target column was a column called species i can even show it to you in this preview over here species have a look species here at the end you can see the last column is my target column okay so here i am recording species of iris flower in the world in the world uh, ramurli there are only three species of iris flower either setosa or versicolor or virginica so ramurli can i say i have finite number of species of iris flower yes if i have only three species of iris flower in the world then can i say i have finite set of possibilities over here i repeat again suppose i want to predict on species okay fine Let, let's understand ramurli ramurli do you understand that some column in my data set will be feature some column in my data set will be target yes or no yes yes okay over here ramurli my target column is let's say species my target column is what species your ramurli we are recording species of which flower we are recording species of iris flower and how many different types of species are available in iris flower guys in the world how many here in this data set how many have recorded scientists have recorded species of how, how many iris different type uh, different species of iris flower only 3 so ramurli can i say 3 is finite in number yes or no So if somebody ask you how many different species of iris flower do you will have, you will say three. So three is finite, right? Three, the value three is finite. Yes or no, Ramurli? The value three is finite. Yes. So that means you are saying, as far as species is concerned, I have finite set of possibilities in species. Species is your target column. So you are saying in your target column you have finite set of possibilities. so ram murli if in your target column you have finite set of possibilities then your model will be called what if in your target column you have finite set of possibilities then your model will be called what ram murli if in your target column you have finite set of possibilities then our model will be called what classification perfect so that's why buddy over here we are choosing a classification model only okay any other doubt buddy since in my target column i have finite set of possibilities i am making a classification model if on the other hand if in my target column i had infinite set of possibilities then i would have been building a regression model but in this scenario since my target column has finite set of possibilities i am choosing a classification model okay fine so just like knn is a classification model even this boosted decision tree is a is another classification model there are many many models in machine learning literally 30 to 40 of them okay uh, today we learnt about one just to show you the mathematics behind that model like that there are many many models having different different mathematics in the background but the goal of each of the model is the same it can be used for two things either for inference or for prediction okay up till now ramurli we have performed seven step over here you can see it says that there is a issue in the seven step and the issue is that here if i double click on it it will ask me to select my target column so i will select my target column over here called species okay so i select it called species that's it and my seventh step is done now eighth and last step what is the eighth and last step guys eighth and last step ha huh. testing the model on the testing data set right when i say testing the model can i say i am essentially trying to say evaluate testing is another word for evaluation right testing is another word for evaluation so i want to evaluate the model 
So here there is a component for evaluating the model. Evaluate model. Here it is. Okay. Here I will evaluate my model. Okay. And actually, uh, before evaluating, what I will have to do is I will. Okay. Let's try to understand when I say evaluating, what happens? Okay. When I say evaluating, what happens is, guys. It takes the testing data set. When I say evaluate on the testing data set or test the model on the testing data set, what happens is we take the target column in the testing data set, okay, the actual target column of the testing data set. And then on that, we try to get the predicted, okay, and what we do is we also try to generate the predicted target column on the testing data set, okay, and these two values we match. So for example, in the first row, if the actual target value is, let's say, uh, something like Setosa, and my model is saying something like Versicolor. So you can see in the first row only the prediction was wrong. Okay. Similarly, let's say in the second row, the actual target value was uh, Versicolor, and the predicted target value is also Versicolor. Okay. So you can see in the second row, the prediction is right. So overall, guys, in there are two rows. Out of the two rows, in how many rows did I get correct prediction? In how many rows did I get correct prediction out of two? In how many rows over here? Have a look. In how many rows did I get correct prediction out of two? In the first row, I got incorrect prediction. In the next row, I got correct prediction. So out of two, in how many rows I have got correct prediction in this example? One, right? Out of two, in this example, I have got correct prediction in one row. So if it, out of two, I've got correct prediction in one row, that means my accuracy will be 0 0.5 or in other words, 50%. Okay, that's how accuracy is calculated. So in total, in how many percentage of the rows I am getting correct prediction? Here I got correct prediction in one out of two rows. That's why my accuracy was 0 0.5. Okay, so in order to calculate accuracy first, what happens is we try to get the prediction on the target column of my testing data set. In order to get that prediction, in order to get that prediction, we have a component called score. Okay. And this score component will help me to get prediction. Here we'll pass my model and we want to get prediction on my testing data set. You know, after splitting the model, we have also got my testing data set. That testing data set I will connect to this component over here. That testing data set I'll connect to this component. Here we go. Okay, so I've connected my testing data set and I've also taken my model. Now, using this, what will happen is I will get predictions. Okay, I will get predictions. After I get predictions, I can calculate my accuracy. Okay, that means I can evaluate my model. And in order to do that, we have a component over here called evaluate. And to this, what I will do is I will just pass the predictions that I've got about in the previous step and I will just connect. And that's it, guys. I've performed my eight steps. First step was to make sure that my data does not have any missing values. Second step was to only keep my feature and target columns. Third step was to make sure that my featured columns are numeric. Fourth step was to make sure that my feature columns do have some rows and sorry, the features do have some rows and some columns. Fifth step was to split the data set into two parts, training and testing. I did that. Sixth step was to make sure that the features are on the same scale. Seventh step was to make sure that we train the model on the training data set. And eighth step was to make sure that we test the model on the testing data set. And I have done all of that over here. Up till now, how I did that in Azure ML Designer, is it clear to everyone? Ha, Bram Murli says when actual target value and predicted target value match. No, no. If all of the actual and predicted target value match, then can I say my accuracy will be equal to one? If let's say there are two rows, out of two rows, both the rows were getting correct prediction. Then my accuracy will be two out of two, which will be equal to one. That means 100% accuracy. If let's say out of two row, only in one row, I get correct prediction. So my accuracy will be one out of two which will be 0 0.5. That means 50% accuracy. Okay, so if in all the rows you are getting correct prediction, so accuracy will be equal to one. Okay, and if in none of the rows you get correct, correct prediction, let's say in out of two rows, in none of the rows you got correct prediction. In zero rows you got correct prediction, so accuracy will be zero. 
that means 0% accuracy okay fine so over here up till now guys how i implemented steps for machine learning in azure ml designer is it clear made sense guys everyone any doubt yes you can see over here i just had to specify these steps but the code for those steps i have not written i have just specified these steps and connected these steps over here but the code for these steps i have not written okay now we'll just save this sequence of steps save it by clicking on the save button and then i will click on this submit button and when i do that what will happen is all these steps will now be implemented okay and here there is a error it says that i have not selected a compute so just like in azure ml notebook i had to select a compute even here i have to select a compute so here i'll select compute instance okay we know the difference between compute cluster and compute instance in compute instance only one machine is used in compute cluster more than one machines are used okay uh, let me select a compute instance that i had created earlier so the same instance that i had used for azure ml notebook same over here i am using okay it's the it's the it's it is with the same name you can see same instance i am using and everything else i'll keep default and i will just go ahead and submit okay i'll just go ahead and submit now and when i do that it asks me to create a, a name for this pipeline okay so let me create a name for this experiment that i'm trying to run on my pipeline so let me create a name i will just say exp dp100 okay and that's it i'll just go ahead and submit okay and what will happen now is that this a uh, pipeline or the sequence of steps has been submitted and in the background now each step will be implemented here i can click on this option called job details okay i can click on this option over here called job details and i can get to know as to which step is being implemented correct currently which step is not implemented and you can see over here you can see that this component is implementing you can even see it it is highlighted for you okay so i got my data set that was done after getting the data set now it is trying to select columns based on the details that we gave it okay so that step is being implemented we'll just wait for all these steps to be done it should take around one or two minutes okay and in one or two minutes all these steps should be done and once all these steps are done i will show you the accuracy of the model at the end just like we got the accuracy of the model in azure ml notebook similarly we'll get accuracy of the model in Azure ML designer as well. Okay, I will just wait for it. Let me just wait. I'll just wait. We, we might have to wait for around two minutes or so. So we'll just wait. And these steps can take time. Okay. even though our data set is small if we have our data set would have been big then the time taken would have been even more okay practically our data set is small so it should not take that much of time fine till these steps are implementing i'll do a quick revision of the things that i have taught up till now so we started today by learning the definition of machine learning we said that machine learning is just a set of tools which is used for two purposes first purpose is to get inference from the data second purpose is to get predictions from the data now how do we do that how do we get inference and predictions from the data we do that by using something called a machine learning model what is a machine learning model it is just a statistical representation of a real world process and in order to work with any machine learning model in the world we need some data to work with and that data needs to have some rows and some columns and the columns in your data needs to be of one of the two types either your column will be a feature column or your column will be a target column feature columns are those columns that help me to predict target column is that column that i want to predict okay then we learn that machine learning models are of two main types first type is called supervised le machine learning model second type is called unsupervised machine learning model what is the difference between the two types well in supervised machine learning models the data that i am using has features and target both whereas in unsupervised machine learning models the data that i am using only has features it does not have target then 
we learned that supervised machine learning models are further of two types first is classification second is regression what is the difference between the two types well in classification model my target call well in classification models the target column has finite set of possibilities whereas in regression models the target column has infinite set of possibilities then after that we looked into our first machine learning model called knn which stands for k nearest neighbors we see how it works we saw how it works there were four steps to it and uh, then we tried to implement a machine learning model using azure ml notebook okay we saw that there are eight steps to do that and similarly we tried to do the same exact thing we tried to implement a machine learning model on azure ml designer using the same exact steps it is just that in azure ml notebook we had to specify the steps as well as code for those steps whereas in azure ml designer we just have to specify the steps there is no need to mention the code okay and here you can see i had specified the steps there was no need to uh, mention the code and here you can see all these steps are being executed we are now into our last step it is being performed you can see it is highlighted it is being performed all the other steps were done that is why they have been marked as green the last step is still being done so we'll just wait for it to complete and at the end i will also show you that after evaluating the model what accuracy you are getting okay so let's just wait we'll just wait over here and remember guys that since we have selected a different model in azure ml designer we might get a different accuracy different models perform differently okay though their goal is the same but uh, the uh, their efficiency okay will be different so over here i'll go ahead and click on this preview data to see my evaluation results and it will give me lot of evaluation it will give me accuracy uh then there is another way in which you can judge the model called precision okay so it will give me those details by the way what is the accuracy of my model guys 0.93 so you can see over here can i say that my so uh, that my model is very good yes below 0.9 i can say that my model is very good below sorry above 0.9 i can say that my model is very good above 0.95 i can say that my model is excellent your my model is not excellent but still it is very good okay i repeat how to judge whether the model is uh, is good not good if your accuracy is greater than or equal to 0.75 that means your model is acceptable if it is greater than or equal to 0.8 that means your model is good if it is greater than or equal to 0.9 that means your model is very good and if it is greater than or equal to 0.95 that means your model is excellent okay here you can see looking at the accuracy i can say that my model is very good because the accuracy is greater than or equal to 0.9 so i can say that my model is very good okay so before the lunch break we had implemented sorry not before the lunch break actually just at uh, uh, 20 minutes back we had implemented a machine learning model on azure ml notebook and now we have implemented a machine learning model on azure ml designer so guys easy up till now any doubt ha now rajiv says in azure ml designer if i want to mention code can i do that that although in azure ml designer there is no need to do that but if i want if you want to do can you do that yes so here there is a component rajiv there is a component okay for coding also there is a component let me show that to you so i will go to my pipeline let me go back i'll go to my pipeline okay and one second home designer here is the pipeline that i created ha huh, here it is and here i will search for this component called code okay or python code let me just write python and here you can see you can execute your python code okay if you want to do it you can write your own code suppose there is no component for the step that you have written okay there is no component available you want to create something on your own for that you can write your own code over here and you can use this component over here if you want to okay so since you asked 
can we write our own code in azure ml designer if we want to yes we can though there is no need but such a facility is available okay though in our scenario we don't didn't need it so i did not show it to you but just to answer your question yes we can was that your question or anything else ha sujata says how to deal with missing values okay so sujata what we do is we follow this guideline okay we follow this guideline now this guideline is not a fixed guideline it depends on the scenario but just to give you a head start i'm just writing the guideline by the way in order to deal with missing values there are only three options available for you either you can remove the rows having missing values second is either you can remove the columns having missing values third is you can replace the missing values okay so these are the only three options available to you out of the three options you have to select which one to do okay so let me mention the guidelines so what are the guidelines so what you do is if uh let's say the total number of missing values in a column is more than 50% if more than sorry not more than 50% more than 40% okay if more than 40% of the values in the column are missing then we just remove that column okay then we take the second approach okay out of the third uh, three approaches you will take the second approach which is to remove the column having missing value okay on the other hand if the missing value percentage missing value percentage in a column is between 20% and 40% then we replace the missing values okay and that means we will take the uh, third approach then we take the third approach then we take the third approach on the other hand if the missing value percentage in a column if the missing value percentage in a column is between 0% and 20% then what we do is we can take the third approach as well as the first approach if i want to okay so that depends upon you uh, what approach you want to take okay that is where your analysis skills will come into play okay that's why uh, you will see that uh, online whenever a machine learning model is implemented they always analyze the data first and then based on the analysis they try to see what to do with this data how how can I, how can they go about this data so th this is the general guideline that is followed i repeat it's not fixed guideline okay so it's not that always if you have more than 40% of always you will remove that column no but 90 to 95% of the times that is the general rule that we follow obviously depending upon the scenario it could change okay but this is the general guideline that we follow okay but it completely depends upon you as a developer how you want it to be how as a analyst you want it to be okay so it completely depends upon you but there is the general guideline that every machine learning engineer follows okay so i have given you the general guideline uh, i repeat this is a general guideline it's not a fixed rule okay so there is no fixed rule available but this is a general guideline that is followed okay so there are only three approaches that you have in order to deal with missing values i have mentioned those three approaches then in which scenario to take which approach i have also mentioned that okay was that your doubt or anything else yes right okay yeah welcome okay fine so let's go ahead and uh, what we will do now is i have shown you how to implement machine learning model using two approaches first approach was using azure ml notebook second approach was using azure ml designer okay and a question for you guys over here i want to ask you a question so let me just show you the executed pipeline here it is i want to ask a question 
we know that this last component called evaluate model gives me the accuracy and all the other metrics right what does the score model component do what does it do what does this model do i know what this last component does which is evaluate model it gives me things like accuracy precision and so on right it gives me those uh, evaluation metrics but what does the score model component do anybody remembers i had spoken about it 10 minutes back okay so ishita are you trying to say that it generates predictions on the testing data set yes okay it generates predictions on the testing data set and you are absolutely right it does generate predictions on the testing data set and let me show you so i will click on a right click on the component i will try to preview the uh, score over here i will try to preview what predictions have been made okay and have a look one second i will just show it to you have a look you can see these were the original labels right so for the first row the actual target value is iris setosa whereas what is the predicted target value predicted target value is also iris setosa okay so you can see that it gives it tries to generate predictions on your testing data set it tries to generate predictions over here on your testing data set apart from that it also gives you the probability as to uh, how much percentage it is sure so it was 0.999% sure that the first row was iris had a target value of iris setosa it was 0% sure that the first row had a target value of iris virginica and so on fine so exactly as ishita and other students have said that uh, when i say scoring the model essentially what it, what happens is we try to generate predictions on the testing data set so i try to cross check my actual target value with the predicted target value in my testing data set okay fine so i have implemented my machine learning model on with two approaches first approach was azure ml notebook second approach was azure ml designer the difference between the two approaches was that in azure ml notebook i had to specify the steps as well as code for the steps whereas in azure ml designer i just have to specify the steps there is no need to mention the code now there is a third approach left what is the third approach called so in azure there is a third approach also to implement machine learning model and that third approach is using ishita says we uh, you ishita you can include additional validation data set if you want to though there is no need okay so that is a separate data set and uh, i will tell you at why it could be used but generally that is not used okay so there there is a additional data set that you can include for validating if you want to but here there was no need Okay, because here i just wanted to implement a simple model using azure ml notebook and azure ml designer though uh, in your companies you might want to test it on additional validations data set and that i will show you ahead if you want to do it how you can but in this scenario we didn't want to but fine so over here what we did guys was i implemented machine learning model using two approaches first was azure ml notebook second was azure ml designer there is a third approach what is the name of that third approach anybody remembers ha huh. kanan and anil have given the right answer the third approach to in implement uh, machine learning model on azure is using azure auto ml what is so special about azure auto ml how is it different than azure ml notebook and azure ml designer what is so special about it can anybody answer ha uh, anil says in azure ml uh, in azure auto ml no need to specify steps as well as code for these steps and he is absolutely right let me show you how so let me start with azure auto ml over here i'll start with it and i'll create a azure ml job uh, auto ml job over here i have already created a data earlier called iris data uh, if you remember for when working with azure ml designer i had uh, uploaded this data called iris data same data i will use so i will select this data if you want to create your own data you can do it if you want to select some other data you can create it over here if you want to but uh, here i will work with the same data called iris okay then after that it will ask me uh, to give the experiment some name so i will just give it a name called auto ml 
DP 100. Okay, then it will ask me to select a target column. My target column is species. Then it will ask me to select the compute type. Okay. Uh, now you can uh, uh, choose compute instance or compute cluster. We know that in compute instance, only one machine is used. In compute cluster, more than one machines are used. Okay, but in compute cluster, although the job will be done fast, but the cost incurred by you will be high. Okay. But if you select compute instance over here, guys, what will happen is it will take too much of time to complete. Okay. So here for now, although if I select compute cluster, the uh, cost incurred by me will be high, but still just to com complete it fast, I'll select this option called compute cluster. Okay. And it has not found any uh, pre existing compute clusters because I have not created any up till now. Let me create it. So I'll create this compute cluster. Okay. And uh, let me select it over here. Uh, let me select any. Or actually, uh, why don't I work with my compute instance only? Uh, fine. One second. In this location, I am not able to select. Why? Okay, let me just check. Why am I not able to select? Is there any issue? Virtual machine size. Okay. I am not able to create a compute cluster. Okay, let me just check why. Let me just check over here. Uh, achha, it says I don't have enough quota for virtual machine size. Okay, so I will. Okay. In my scenario, I will have to mail them to give me more cores. Okay. Because you can see zero cores are available. Because whatever cores I had left, I have already used it for my compute instance. If you remember my compute instance, I guess I had used. Eight cores, if I'm not wrong, something like that. So what, whatever number of cores I had left for my CPU that I've already used. So if I want to exit it, I will, I, I will have to mail them. And uh, even if you face the same issue, you can mail them and they, they always increase the quota. Okay, just by mailing no additional cost. They will just increase the uh, quota for you. Obviously, if you use it, then you will have to in, in, incur cost. But uh, for increasing the quota, there is no cost. Okay. But here, I don't think I will increase the quota. So what I will do is I will not create a compute cluster because mailing them and then they will revert back. It will take too much of time. So I will just work with compute instance, the one that I had created earlier. And fine, I'll click on next over here. And you can see when I selected the target column called species, it automatically came to know that over here the model that will be that will be built will be a classification model. If you want to change it, you can change it by choosing regression. But it says that no, this is not the right type of model. It even gives you this warning. Okay, so classification is the right type of model. We know that. Then after selecting the type of model, I'll click on next. Then how do I want to do my validation? I'll just uh, select auto over here and that's it. I'll just go ahead and run this. And as I as someone told over here, one of the students told uh, if you want to include more testing data sets, more validation data sets. You can use it. I don't want to include additional, so I'll just keep it default. Okay, then I'll just go ahead, create this uh, auto ML job, and you can see over here it is getting created. Okay, it has not started. Just after a few seconds, it should get started. And uh, if, then if you go to this model step, guys. If you go to this model step, then one by one you will start seeing models. Right now the job has not started, so you won't see models. But after five ten minutes, you will be able to see every model. So it will create, uh, it will uh, create uh, every model. Okay, it will create KNN model. Then there are many other models available in Azure. So it will create models. Uh, so it will use the same Iris data set. And create multiple models, one for KNN model, one for logistic regression model. Okay, like this. It will create uh, models using different different algorithms. Then 
looking at the accuracy of the model, I have to select which algorithm was the best one. Was it KNN or was it something else? Okay, I have to select which is the best one. So we'll just wait for uh, half an hour to one hour because it does take time. And in fact, since I've selected compute instance, right, it will take even more time. But fine, we don't have to worry. This was just to show you how it is done. Okay, although it takes time, uh, but if you try to do it on your own laptop, you will be able to perform it. Although it may take up, take up some time, but still at the end, we will be able to get the desired results just like we wanted. Okay, you can see it is setting up the run. It will take too much of time because I've selected compute instance. I did not have enough cores for selecting compute cluster. Okay, fine. And one by one, you will start seeing models in the models tab. Right now it has not started, but uh, after five, 10 minutes, you will start seeing models. Okay, and if, if let's say after three models, you are fine with the results, you don't want to check with other algorithms, other models, then you can click on this cancel button. So then Azure AutoML won't create a model with every algorithm that is available. It will just cancel the execution there itself. Okay, fine. So let's wait for at least five, 10 minutes. Uh, till then we should at least get our first model if possible. Let's see, because I've selected compute instance, I don't know how much time it will take. For compute cluster, it usually takes around five minutes to create one model. Okay, but com for compute instance, because I'll be only using one machine, it could take even more time. But fine, let's at least wait. And then we should see our desired results. So what we have done, guys, is we have implemented a machine learning model using each of the three approaches on Azure. Okay. Up till now, guys, is it making sense to everyone how to implement machine learning model using each of the three approaches on, on Azure? Was it easy? Made sense? Yes or no, guys? No? Yes? Yes, okay. Okay. So you can see that these steps are very easy. And guys, Azure machine learning is very vast. And I had to like... Uh, uh, do it do it a bit faster because I had to implement all the three approaches today. Okay, but uh, each of these steps has a lot of details. Okay, and uh, we didn't go into the details a lot because we just had to cover the overview of how you can do machine learning on Azure platform. So we tried to do that, but fine. Here, what I will do is I will wait for uh, the models to get created. After that, I will show you one more thing. Till then, we can do a quick revision. Anil says, how vast is ML? Uh, ML body is very vast. When I say very vast, see, uh, first you will have to complete algorithms. As I said, there are 30 to 40 algorithms that are used, out of which I think if, if even if you cover like 10 to 15, you are fine. Okay, because uh, like 90% of the times you will mostly work with those 10 to 15 models only. Okay, so first you have to cover algorithms. Then in order to optimize those algorithms, we have techniques like hyperparameter tuning and all of that. So you will have to see different ways of hyperparameter tuning. Okay, so it's quite vast. Uh, I guess in order to learn the concepts of DP100, you will have to spend at least two weeks of time if I'm not wrong, okay? You might get, okay, even if you just refer the uh, exam dumps, you can pass the certification. Passing the certification is not important, but to know everything in DP100, you will have to spend around two weeks of time, okay? To know the algorithms, to see how you can optimize them, once you do that, then how can you implement the same thing on cloud? There are many things that you can do over here. here. We just implemented them simply. There are many, many settings that we can do over here. We didn't go into those settings. So I guess at least two weeks you will require fully. Okay, so it's very vast. But at the same time, it's quite exciting and easy as well. But yeah, to answer your question, it's very vast. I feel if you are just a beginner, I don't know if you are a beginner or you have intermediate knowledge of machine learning. If you are a beginner, at least two weeks it will take. Beginner, okay. Okay, Google Maps, you are saying Google Maps uses it already to estimate tram travel. Okay, any other example? 
any other example of machine learning uh, okay say for example all the stock prices that you get online right for example when i was into crypto trading we used to have a platform i am forgetting the name of that platform it was very popular okay i am forgetting the name of that platform it was very popular no no not wasir wasirx is trash uh wasirx is just a uh, tool where you can like trade but there was a prediction platform it helped us to understand uh, when to sell when to buy it gave us those signals i'm forgetting the name it was a foreign company so i'm i don't remember the name but that uh tool did what it essentially used machine learning only right so essentially it used machine learning only it used models and so models are used everywhere okay your prediction models are used everywhere for example tesla what does tesla do it makes prediction models though it uses deep learning for that not machine learning but it uses deep learning is this that in deep learning same thing happens is this that in the background the mathematics are a bit more complex okay in the end in machine learning also you are building models in deep learning also you are building models machine learning is used to build models on simple tabular data deep learning is used to build models on complex data like images in the end models are used everywhere whether it is by tesla by your tesla car okay uh, for your weather prediction what happens models are only built okay for example in america if someone is predicting the weather essentially they are putting the data into a model and that model is predicting whether snow will come whether rain will come okay so models are used literally everywhere it could be machine learning models sometime it could be deep learning models sometime okay but models are nowadays used everywhere and uh, uh first i would always recommend if you are a beginner don't just start with azure machine learning because in azure you can see it's very easy to create model okay for example out of the three approaches auto ml is very very easy right because you don't have to mention the steps you don't have to mention the code it's good so you can create a model very easily but you won't understand what is happening in the background so for that i always suggest that first try to create models on your local laptop okay and don't touch cloud at all try to create models on your local laptop see how the models work how you can optimize them using techniques like hyperparameter tuning then using uh, feature engineering techniques right now we just how did we select features we just check whether the feature look good to us or not but that is not how it works in offices right there is a whole technique for that and using that technique we can figure out whether that feature is actually useful or not and that technique is called feature engineering technique so there are many feature engineering techniques available okay so like this there are many optimizing te techniques that are available and so first try to implement that do not touch cloud at all once you know how machine learning works without cloud then try to go to azure and see how the same thing can be implemented in azure that is a good way to progress okay any yeah, answer but just to answer your question where models are used literally everywhere whether it is stock prediction weather prediction okay models are used it could be machine learning models depend or deep learning models depending on the scenario okay shita says black friday sale uses machine learning okay so yeah models would be used everywhere it could be machine learning model or deep learning model depending upon the scenario fine and let me just check whether at least one model has been created no ha ha you can see guys you can see some models have been created right over here you can see that some models have been created knn exibus and you might wonder what is this so guys if you remember what was the sixth step of implementing supervised learning to check whether the feature columns are on the same scale or not and if they are not on the same scale we will convert them to the same scale so this is a scaling technique so on knn it applied this first scaling technique then similarly on knn it applied this second scaling technique and so on so with different different scaling techniques it is seeing how is the performance okay so here if i want to stop it i can stop okay otherwise it will go on for 20 30 more algorithms so for now 
what i will do is i will cancel the execution let me click on this cancel button over here and i will cancel the execution so now no more algorithms will be run i'm fine with the algorithms that i've already got i'm fine with it okay i do not want more fine and in order to check the performance i can click on this model over here and uh, then i can click on this option called uh, explain okay explanations or matrix let me check matrix and over here i will be able to check matrix so you can see what is the accuracy of the model one it is the best accuracy right so accuracy is always between 0 to 1 1 is the best 0 is the worst here you can see this model give me a very good accuracy okay like this you can check with different different models okay so this is just one model this is just one model over here like this you can go back and check with different different models let me just show it to you uh, here is my machine learning experiment okay and here i built models and you can see the first model if i'm happy i can go ahead and stick with it similarly for checking the performance of your second model you can click on it and check your performance matrix and even here you can see the performance is quite good okay so depending upon which model you feel is the best you can choose that model okay and once you choose which model is the best for you select that model for example i feel the first model is the best for me i will select it now in, or, in order for me to use it what i will do in order for me to use it or in order for my teammates to use it i will have to deploy the model what will i have to do i will have to deploy the model so how to deploy up till now we have not learned up to, uh, about deploying we have just created the model in azure machine learning notebook or azure machine learning designer or azure auto ml we have not deployed the model anywhere but in azure auto ml let's try to deploy the model let's see so i will select the model that i want to deploy i'll select it over here you can see a tick mark has come then i'll click on this button called deploy there are two options first is deploy the model using a real time endpoint second is deploy the model to a web service i'll click on this first option over here real time endpoint okay what will happen in that case i will just show to you okay first let me just click on that option called real time endpoint and then i'll just give this endpoint some name i will say endpoint okay of knn model fine then i have to select the compute type whether it is a kubernetes cluster or whether it is a managed cluster okay so depending upon the type we have to select here i will keep everything default we won't go into the details of uh, the compute types whether kubernetes or managed okay uh, we won't go into the details of that we'll just keep everything default i just want to show you how to deploy okay just keep everything default just go ahead just give it the default name you can just go ahead virtual machine name okay here because i had to create cluster guys uh, because always for deploying i will have to create a cluster in my scenario i won't be able to create cluster because as you can see all my cores have been already used okay there are zero cores available with me so i won't be able to use it because even for choosing this first machine right at least one core needs to be available but i have zero cores available with me fine so i won't be able to create a compute cluster but you can go ahead just keep everything default okay and go ahead and select the machine that you want to use and just keep on clicking the next 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 button and at the end you will receive a endpoint link using that link you can access the model so anywhere in the world you want to access the model you can just access it using that link okay that's how you can deploy it on cloud so just by clicking on that deploy button you can deploy it and just go through the default steps don't change anything in your scenario maybe you will have some cores left with you okay so you might be able to create compute cluster i am not able to create it okay i do not have enough quota with me available i will have to mail them to increase my quota but fine in your case you will have to just keep everything default okay and just go with the default steps after you go with the default steps at the end you will receive a link and using that link you can access the model okay anywhere in the world and you, then you ac after accessing the model you can use it to generate more predictions if you want to okay and all of that things you can do 
but in order for other people to use our created model you have to always deploy it and how to deploy it by clicking on this deploy button over here okay fine up till now if you have any doubts let me know what we have done guys is uh, we have just implemented machine learning model using three approaches on azure first approach was azure ml notebook second approach was azure ml designer and third approach was azure auto ml up till now if you have any doubts let me know i'll just do a quick revision and just have uh, just listen to these statements that i'm mentioning in the revision if you have any doubts in the revision just let me know okay so i will just start off with the beginning till then i will have a look at the chat if you have any doubts you can mention let me start the revision so guys the first concept that we learned was the definition of machine learning okay so we learned that machine learning is nothing but a set of tools which is used for two purposes first purpose is to make inferences on the data second purpose is to make predictions on the data and how does it do that it does that by using something called a machine learning model what is a machine learning model it is just a statistical representation of a real world process and in order to use a machine learning model we need some data to work with and that data needs to have some rows and some columns also the columns in your uh, data needs to be of one of the two types either it could be a feature column or it could be a target column so feature columns are those columns that help me to predict target column is that column that i want to predict okay then we learned that there are two main types of machine learning models first is supervised machine learning model second type is called unsupervised machine learning model what is the difference between the two types well in supervised machine learning model the data that i am using has features and target both whereas in unsupervised machine learning model the data that i am using only has features it does not have target then we learn that supervised machine learning models are further of two types classification and regression in classification model the uh, target column has finite set of possibilities whereas in regression model my target column has infinite set of possibilities then later we implemented our first machine learning model called knn which stands for k nearest neighbors in knn there are four steps first step is to choose number of neighbors second step is depending upon the number of neighbors you will choose that many closest labeled data points third step is to make all of the selected closest labeled points to vote fourth step is depending upon the majority of votes will assign a label to the unlabeled data point okay then we saw how to implement a machine learning model using three approaches on azure platform so firstly we implemented a machine learning model called knn on azure ml notebook after that we implemented a machine learning model on azure ml designer thirdly we implemented a machine learning model on azure auto ml right and we implemented models we created the models but for our models to be useful to others we have to do what we have to always do something to them what do we have to do in order for our models to be used by someone else for example i have created my model in mumbai i want my teammate in new york to use it i will have to do what deploy right ishita and karan have given the correct answer i will have to deploy it and after deploying then uh, you will get a link using that link the person any person in the world in any corner of the world can go ahead and use that model that you have created okay fine so that was our goal for today's session to show you how you can implement machine learning model using three approaches on azure platform uh, was it i hope it was useful to you i hope you learned something uh, this is just 5% of what will come in your dp100 certification okay dp100 as i said is a associate level certification and it revolves around machine learning machine learning is vast you will have to give at least 2 weeks of time to be good at it okay if you if your goal is just to pass the exam then using the dumps you can pass the exam that's not a issue but in order to know the concepts in dp100 you will have to spend at least 2 weeks uh, can you share the ppt okay yeah sure so what i will do is i will hand it over to um, chetali chetali you can uh, conclude the session and i will share the share my ppt and materials with you so if you want you can share it with the participants is chetali there chetali ma'am 
Okay, I will call her. Okay, because yes, Chaita, uh, uh, Chaita is not there. Uh, hello. Okay, fine. So, sir, uh, will will we be able to share the PPT with them? Uh, sure, sure. With the participants, okay. right? Ha, huh, with the participants. Yes, okay. we can. Okay. So In fine, PDF so format, huh? In PDF huh. format. Fine. So, sir, you can take over. Uh, our goal for today's session is done. Also, at the end, I'm supposed to give a feedback link. So, one second, yes, I'll yes. just make sure that everybody receives that feedback link. Just one minute. Okay. Just one minute, guys. I'll give you the feedback link. Okay. So, guys, I've pasted the feedback link in the chat. Uh, so, you can fill it up. I hope. Uh, today's session was useful to you. If you have any doubts, uh, you can always contact me on LinkedIn. Okay. I will be available on LinkedIn if you have any doubts. Okay. So best of luck for your DP100 certification. As I said, this is 5% of what will come in your certification. Okay. You will have to spend at least 10 days to 14 days fully to be good at machine learning. And just to recap about the exam, as I said, there's an associate level exam. There are three levels, uh, three uh, exam levels that are conducted by Azure. First is fundamental level. Second is associate, le associate level. Third is expert level. So DP100 is an associate level exam. In it, all the questions will be MCQ based, wherein you will have around 37 to 43 questions. Each question will have a different weightage. Some question could have for 50 marks. Some question could have 30 marks. Some question could have 20 marks. The marks won't be shown to you on the question paper. So you have to treat every question as important. Okay. And uh, the entire question paper will be of 1000 marks out of which you have to score at least 700 to pass that certification exam. Yes. Thank you, Govindraj. So any student, if at all you have any doubt. Yes. Thank you, Karan. You can always contact me on LinkedIn. I'll give you my LinkedIn profile. Okay, if you have any doubts. Also, you can contact the Synergetics admin team if you want to. For now, I'll just give you my LinkedIn ID. One second, yes, guys, I'll just... Yes, huh. we are sharing. Okay, Achha, fine, okay. Okay. Thank Fine. you, Smith, uh, for this uh, wonderful session on DPE 100, designing and implementing a data science solution on Azure. I hope uh, all the participants have got a lot to learn through this uh, webinar. You got the uh, feedback link, right? One second. I'm sharing one second the feedback link. Please, before leaving, Hello, uh, uh, Smith, are you there? Ha, yes, I'm there. Can you please reshare the link that she? Achha, uh, okay. I will reshare it. Yes. Okay, I've reshared the link, guys. So please fill in before. Uh, just fill in the feedback before leaving the session. Before le uh, before leaving, please uh, do submit your feedback. Your feedback is valuable for us. Please uh, share your feedback before leaving.
Thank you, everyone. You can leave the session. Thank you. Thank you, Smith.